Hello Techies. In this tutorial, we will learn about landmark detection action which is available under Google Vision Actions. First of all, this tutorial I am going to divide into two parts. In the first part, we will learn about landmark detection action. In the second part, we will work on a small project on landmark detection. All right. In this first part, we will learn about landmark detection action. Let me drag and drop this action onto the workspace. Landmark detection action can be performed by using Cloud Vision API. Cloud Vision API will attempt to detect landmarks such as Mount Rushmore and the Sydney Opera House. The API will provide their known graphical locations if available. And also the landmark detection detects popular natural and man-made structures in the image which are available. All right. Now, first of all, we'll see the parameters. What kind of parameters that we have for the landmark detection? The same parameters which we have in the vision label detection, we are having the same kind of parameters available for the landmark detection also. And the same parameters is applicable for the remaining actions which are available under the vision actions. All right. First of all, we'll see what is API. As we know, API stands for Application Programming Interface. This is the key which we are going to get it from the Cloud Vision API. All right. In our previous session, we have created this API. Now, if you see provide image, there are two options that we have. First one is from file, another one from GCS. All right. Now, whenever you are going to select from file, you are going to select image file path from the local, that is local computer. And whenever you are going to select from GCS, that is Google Cloud Storage, it, is, it will lose Google Cloud Storage image URI. All right. For the time being, I'm going to select from file. Now, if you see advanced, this is the timeout we are having for 30 seconds. This is the default timeout where this one will use to connect to the Cloud Vision API. All right. If it is exceeding more than 30 seconds and the connection between the Power Automate desktop and the Google Cloud, if it is not happening, in that case, it will throw some timeout error. All right. Once we will provide all these details, it will give the response in the JSON format. If you see, the output will come in the JSON response where it will store in the flow variables with the name of JSON response. In that particular JSON response, we are having description, we are having latitude and longitude related to that image. All right. And the status code defines two things. One is if it successfully process the request, in that case, we will get it as 200. If the re request and response is not proper and it is a bad request and response, in that case, you will get it as 400. To work with this landmark, first of all, we'll see an image as an example. If you see on my screen, I'm having man-made structure that is Taj Mahal, which is very popular in India. Once I am going to upload this image for the landmark detection, it will give an output in a such a way with the description of as Taj Mahal and it will give the respective longitude and latitude. Now, first of all, we need to get the API key. From where we can get this API key? In our previous sessions, we have created the API key from the Cloud Vision API by using Google Cloud Platform. Let me go back to that. And there, if you see over here, I'm in APS and service, which are available in the Google Cloud Platform. There you can see I have created a Vision API key I'm going to copy that API key and then I'm providing the API key in the parameters. Second one is the provide image. We have selected the option from file from where we are going to select that file from our local. We are not selecting from GCS that is Google Cloud Storage. All right. Let me go to the path that is E colon power automate landmark detection folder. There you can see I'm having Taj Mahal. I'm going to select that image. And then I have given the remaining parameters as timeout as 30 seconds. And the output will be stored in the JSON response. And you can see the status code as 200 once the request has been completed successfully. All right, let me click on save. Now, to see the output, let's run the flow. 
flow execution started and it has been interacted with the google cloud platform by using our api key and you got the response over here in the json response format all right let's double click on the response that is json response now if you see over here in the responses i am having landmark annotations let's double click on more or let's click on more and there you can see I'm having response of zero that is only one so that I'm having landmark annotations in the custom object format let's click on more there you can see I'm having mid and after that you can see the description over here and the Taj Mahal we got it and the score you can see 0 0.6673287 on bound poly they are the verticals we are having it along with that you will get the latitude and longitude let me show you that you can see the locations over here. You are having latitude and longitude inside the entity that is lat lang. Let me open click on more over here to find what kind of latitude and longitude we are having. You can see the longitude and latitude inside that. Now let's click on close. Now to get the description, this image is representing some some name right man-made structure right i want to get it what exactly it is so that i want to display the image how can i display it display the name of the image right i'm going to use display message over here let me drag and drop this action onto the workspace now i'm going to give it as landmark at the message box title and then i'm going to message to display if you see, I'm going to get it the JSON response. Inside the response, I'm going to get the first index over here. And inside that, I'm having landmark annotations. Inside that, I'm having the description with the name. All right, let me click on Save. Now, in the same way, I'm going to provide longitude and latitude information. Let me drag and drop another message box onto the workspace. There, I'm going to give the title as latitude and longitude all right now i'm going to display the message over here in a such a way from where we will get the output from the json response inside that i'm having responses and the landmark annotations inside that i'm having locations where i will get the latitude and longitude information all right let's click on save now let's run the flow to see the output Flow execution started. And you can see the display message. We have provided the image of the Taj Mahal that we know manually, right? Now, if you observe that we got the output as Taj Mahal, and you can see I got it the latitude and longitude information. The latitude and longitude information will provide man made structure is available on the particular Google map. Now, what I will do, I will go for Google Maps. Now, I'm going to take the same latitude and longitude over here. I have copied the latitude and longitude. Now, let me go back to my Google Maps. There, I'm going to provide the details over here. There, you can see this is the first one is longitude. Another one is latitude. Let me go ahead. Let me search it. There, you can see I got the location of the Taj Mahal. So this is the location where we have. You can see Taj Mahal over here and the Taj Mahal garden. This is the location where you are having the Taj Mahal. This is how we are going to detect the landmarks by using the images by using Cloud Vision API with the landmark detection action. I hope you understand how to work with landmark detection action as part of this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will work on a small project on landmark detection. So what is the use case that we are going to work? We are going to give the input for the landmark detection action as an image, which is the man-made structure. And then we will locate it on the Google map with latitude and longitude. So we are going to create a flow over there by using this use case. And then based on the inputs which we are going to provide, based on that, we will identify on our Google maps automatically by using our desktop flows. Thank you for watching Power Automate tutorials. If you have any queries related to this concept, please post them in the comment section. I will see you in the next session. Till then, bye-bye. Have a wonderful day.